Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Swing Catalyst software demonstration. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. We're going to be going over a few things, uh, actually everything about the software. My name is Tim Dijelay. I'm the sales manager for Swing Catalyst USA, uh, together with Travis Keller. Travis, you yep. want to say a few things? Yep, Travis Keller here. Um, so head of support for the U.S. and I'm located in Orlando, Florida. Uh, typically available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Yeah, we keep Travis locked up there. We no, no one really gets to see him, so it's a good chance that we can kind of finally get a good view of Travis there. But he's uh, does great. He's been with the company for, I don't know, 10, 12 years now? About that, yep. yep. So I've been with the company about eight years. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right into it. I'm going to share the screen. Here we go. And hopefully what you can see here on the screen, we have off to the side just a little bit of what we're going to be going through. So. Uh, we're going to start with uh, obviously welcoming everyone uh, to watching this and we have the uh, 9.3 software so if you have not are not using this software version and do like the features of it please do uh, go on and uh, you can actually do it right from your software from the settings you can go to general and right down here you can check for updates if you'd like to update and it will get you over to the support page if you want to update it for all of you individuals working on um, subscriptions, you should be able to have this software available to you. So let's start. Um, so Travis, how are we doing so far? Yeah, usually whenever you first start the software, as long as you're connected to the internet, you'll be prompted right away if there's any updates. Um, if you don't get prompted, then you're usually on the latest version. Perfect, thank you. So this is a screen in which when you open up the software, you'll come to this one. We're just gonna dive right into the anal analyze right away. Um, what you have here is a list of all your individuals uh, that you either work with or could be family members. Uh, one thing that's really neat here is this part here because right now it's in alphabetic order by the first name, but you can actually have it as the last name or even in reverse by the first name uh, or the last name going backwards this way. So uh, just some different options for you there. If you do not have a player or are adding yourself or another player, you want to start out by clicking on new, new user. And then the, the ones that are the asterisk are really for you. So if I go test webinar. So let's change that. Uh, those are again, the only two that are required. These is, is up to you. And if you are using a sensor plate, it might be important to click on the left hand. You can have it for your reference as well. Because Even if you just have a left-handed camera, that left-handed box will usually help and default the cameras to a left-handed or right-handed face-on camera, depending on what user you have. Perfect, so cameras and the hardware, the sensor plates. Yep. Perfect. So once you have that information there, you can click OK, and that would take you to the capture option, but you can go back in and make changes. It's already highlighted that I could go back and edit certain things. Um, but I do also want to show you the option of group. Um, I'll get into this in a little bit, but if I make a group, let's say tour players, what I can do is I can go through and, and take individuals and move them over this direction there. So this would be a grouping that you can put together. And again, I'll explain here shortly uh, why you might want to do that. So we'll go Another quick thing to add really quick, Tim, is if you plan on sending any lessons, it's good to get in the habit of typing in your student's email address. So whenever it comes time to actually send out that lesson, it'll automatically populate that email address for that student. Perfect. Yeah, because sometimes you're adding a person's last name, like mine, I spell it every single time. So since you're there, getting their last name, uh, you can also add that in there. It's a good point, Travis. Thanks. And if you have a long list like Tim does here, if you you know looking for a specific student, you can just type in their you know the beginning of their name, and it'll narrow down the entire list and make it a lot easier to find that person. Perfect. Thanks, Travis. Well, you could have left it there. Let's just go back to my name. Yeah. Okay. And then we're getting to where we can capture a swing. It does come to this quick start if you were to import or open up a, an existing recording but we're just gonna get into the capture right away. So if you go capture, you'll see off to the side, I have another camera set up. 
sorry about the view there. But a um, little bit of overview is right now, it is ready for recording. So the capture green, it's, it's ready to go. You have this uh, line going across the bottom like a film. It says ready. The left hand side here gives you a lot of drawing tools, which we'll get into shortly. At the top is an explorer, which is a, uh, a folder of all your swings and, and customers, or all your swings and, and those listed in there. Up here is the person that you will be capturing the recording, so it'll be saved under this person's name. This is a manual trigger, so if you're going to manually trigger the recording, which I'll do here shortly, you do have some capture options, some layout options. This is the how to uh, begin a lesson recording. You have the online, if you use our Swing Kettles app, which I'll get into here again. And you have some other features here. You have some empty boxes. Now these will fill up with certain things once you do capture a video. If you do have a sensor plate, it will show the, the balance plate in this box. So that would be the only thing really live other than, than the video. Uh, One question that I get pretty often is people with launch monitors will be curious why their launch monitor data isn't showing up in these boxes. So just wanted to remind everyone that you will only, you don't see any launch monitor data when you're in live mode because we don't really have any launch monitor data to associate with the live video. You'll only get that information once you record a swing and open it. That's great. And that's even with the, the 3D motion plate as well. You don't get all the, the forces until you actually take a shot. Those are good points because yep. people do bring that, bring those up. So one thing here that uh, is pretty important as well that a lot of people do miss is where it says default. I think now if I were to take a swing here, it is a really good uh, to get into the routine of adding, let's say, whatever club that they're hitting because it's a reference point. And we do have a filter, which we'll get into here shortly. So it is good to put what club, specific club they're hitting. Okay. Definitely. So we do have some different layouts. So the one that we're currently in is called single recording, which gives you the four boxes with either one, two or three or four camera angles, depending on how many are hooked up. I only have one. That's why if I have multiple uh, cameras, they would also be white and not grayed out like this. So this is one, one way to view the software. The second is data centric where you get into uh, kind of a little bit smaller viewpoint with two larger boxes. This is nice if you are using a sensor plate because it does show it a little bit bigger and maybe a launch monitor it's, because then you can review it after they hit a shot in this mode. Thirdly is compare mode. Compare, we'll get into that in a little bit, but as far as Triggering the video, you may not want to have this one. Uh, it is a little bit overkill by having a blank space here. Uh, you might want to save that when you actually do a comparison. Video overlay is uh, grayed out at the moment, but we'll get into that here shortly. And then data, uh, detailed data, this again is great when you have a sensor plate because you can really show, sorry, I don't have one connected, but we'll, we'll show you those. Well, ones. open up a swing app from your Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, there are a shortcut for this, so if you have a keyboard like this, you can use F1, which you bring up to uh, the single recording, F2. So it basically goes in the same order. So F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. So if you do like shortcuts, it's a good way to, to um, move over to those uh, different views. And if you don't have an, a launch monitor, you don't have any um, sensor plates, you can also take this little arrow right here and move that. And then that just gives you a big view of the picture. How are we doing? So you can ask questions. I do have Facebook open. Feel free to, to uh, throw some questions out there. I'll be trying to answer them as they come in. Under the capture caption options, the different modes of capture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger a video and maybe Travis, you can explain here what is the multi capture which I've just triggered. Yeah, so really quickly, multi capture is the most rapid way of triggering uh, multiple swings. So if you aren't necessarily interested in watching a replay after every swing that you hit, 
Um, Multi-capture will let you hit a shot and go back into capture mode fa faster than the other options. Perfect, so as you can see, I'm capturing certain swings here and the latest one always is to the left. So the older ones move to the right and they'll continue moving across the bottom. And then the second capture option is multi-capture with replay. So as I trigger that one. So it's pretty much the same as multi-capture, except it's gonna replay the video once before going back into capture mode to hit another shot. So you'll at least get to review it once, you know, review it. And you can always change the playback speed like Tim is doing now. Perfect. And then I'm gonna play that, do that one more one more time because it is it is um, pretty interesting this wheel because you can open it up if you click in it you can kind of see what you're waiting for sometimes you might be waiting for a launch mod or you might be waiting for something so by clicking the wheel will give you an idea of what you're waiting for and then the third one here the single capture with replay let's get back to live and i'm going to trigger that one so this one here, what this is going to do, is going to play the recording the speed that you select, and it's going to either end or it will go on a continuous loop. So right now it ends, but if I do enable the continuous loop, if I do trigger the video again, here, let's see, we'll go uh, resume capture. So now if I trigger the video, now it should just continue looping the swing. For those of you that want to hit a shot and review the swing over and over again, this one's for you here. And you do have some options here at the bottom, as you can see, delete recording. You can open it right from here. Then if you do like the swing, we also have a star rating uh, that you can rate it one, two, or three. And that will be again for a review. So let's go back to capture. So again, you can see I have multiple swings here at the bottom. We call that down in the stack. And if I click each one of them, you can actually see when it was recorded, what the swing, it would actually give a preview of the swing. It tells you what club, if you had any, well, uh, if you have any launch monitor data, it would also be there as well. You can delete the swing, delete the recording. You can just remove it from the stack by clicking one of those. So let's say if I want to delete the recording, I can delete that one. If I wanted to star this one, I could star it as a reference point. So when I go back, you see it's starred right there. Um, so those are some features in regards to capturing uh, a swing. Anything I missed out, Travis? No, well said. Okay. So what we're going to get into now is we will get into the preview. So I'm going to go up to the Explorer because I have a lot of different swings here rather than just looking at mine. So if um, these are all the different swings under under my file. So you can see I have 411 recordings and certain dates. You can expand all to get a good overview of everything. And let's say if I open up a swing. So this was actually filmed with an app. I'm just using this as an example. One thing you do want to do is to get into a habit if you um, feel a need to set the bookmarks. They're really good when you use comparison. So what you would do is you go here over to the right hand side. You would open the bookmarks and I believe the shortcut for that is uh, control B. So if you like on your keyboard, you can just go control B as well and that will open that up. So you actually want to take the bookmark itself itself and move it to start a swing. So if I hover it over, well, it says position one, it may also say, um, Start to take away. Start to take away. So number two is, is top of swing. So if I get the top of swing, and then number three would be impact. So let's move back here to impact. There you go. And then I would lock it back. So now those are set. So um, there is a shortcut as well that what you can do is, let, let me see if I can open up another one here. Let's take this one here. I don't have. So a little bit quicker way is to take the ball instead, and then you can use your keyboard by holding down control and pressing the number one. And that will set the bookmark to the first position. We go top of swing. That will then control two. And then thirdly would be control three would be impact. So those are setting the bookmarks. 
And then once your bookmarks are set, you can press one, two, and three on your keyboard to jump to each one of those positions. And if it's not playing back, you can press one and then press your space bar to pop to play and pause. So space bar, pressing it once will play, pressing it again will pause it. Yeah, it's perfect. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, because right now you can press play, you can pause it, you can go frame by frame. You could use your, your wheel on your your mouse to do that. I think even on the keyboard you can use the, the arrows right or left. So there's some different options in regards to the playback. Yeah, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, that's by far the easiest in my experience to go frame by frame. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, I think uh, that's a little bit of the review. Um, let's get into a little bit more of the explore here. So again, I'm gonna use um, Suzanne Pedersen here for a minute because I, I want to uh, show you one thing I think is I'm just hopping right over here. So Suzanne, we've been working with her for, for quite a few years. But I do want to show one thing that's pretty neat in regards to using the filter. You can actually go to a club. Now again, I have lots of swings here. So let's say if I just want to look at Albert Irons. So if I highlight that, it takes away all the swings other than just irons. So you can, if you want to just look at seven irons, it takes away everything except for seven irons. So it's a nice little filtering uh, option there. And same with the launch monitor. We've had the launch monitor hooked up to most of these. And I know for, um, for let's say a driver, if we want to get up into a 1.5 smash factor, it's gonna take those away. And let's say we're gonna look for low spin. So we're looking for a, kind of like the high launch will spin. So that way I can get right to it. I can you know, get right into that one swing that we had with Suzanne that was really her potentially one that she's looking for, you know, high launch, high smash factor, uh, low spin. So this would be a good one here. So the Explorer gives you a lot of different options up here. And this is just one in regards to the, the filtering, but you can also do it under rating. And again, with the launch monitor, and also the club. Anything you want to touch on there, Travis? No, that's great. I mean, whenever you have, you know, hundreds or potentially thousands of swings for somebody, this is a really effective way to find that swing that you're looking for. Perfect. Also under the Explorer, you see we have the library of all your swings here. You can open swings. Uh, you can import swings. We do have a lot of customers moving over from V1 into JC Video. So if you are one of those customers and you do like the features of Swing Cows, we can take uh, the swings from your assortment or from your library and move those over to our software. Uh, we also have the opportunity to export. If you want to export all these swings, we can export them with data or with video. Uh, we can upload swings from the cloud and also you can go to our shop and also either update your software from the shop and also um, download tour swings from the shop. So all that is right in your Explorer. And just like how you saw Suze, uh, Tim was accidentally skipping over Suzanne, just like if on the main menu, if you're looking for a specific student, you can search for that student's name here in the Explorer as well to easily locate them. Yep, perfect. So let's take uh, Suzanne here. Let's just take uh, one of her swings here. Um, what you can do is you can just drag and drop it uh, right into where it says uh, viewpoint A. And we'll open that one up. We've already had everything preset for her. So in the display here at the top, uh, unfortunately we didn't put what iron she had there, but some of the views here, you can actually switch this. This is down the line. We can actually change this if you wanted to have the face on on the left-hand side. And here uh, is down the line on the right-hand side. If we get into some of the feet, the drawing features, which I think was going to be next, was um, the bottom here is zoom. So this will fill up the view of it. So even if we want to remove this, you could just get into filling up everything. We do have um, a movable where you can make, let's say, the, the video larger or smaller. So this is a nice feature if you're looking for something specific. And I'll show you this again. This is going to be a good one if you want to move it around in a, in a compare mode. This is a measuring tool. Um, it's pretty unique. I, I know that this balance plate is 39 inches. So if I were to bring this across here, 
and set it at 39 inches. Now everything that I measure after this would be based off of that. And again, it's um, it gets pretty close, but it gives you an idea of something's wider or longer um, than the other. So obviously shoulders are wider than her hips. So um, that's a feature if you have a need for that. I know Mike Adams does the, um, the width or the length of the arms compared to the height and certain things. So uh, if you want to use that feature, that's there for you. Uh, we do have a text so you can actually, you know, type something. Um, type it there if you want to have any of that. Some of these are pretty standard. So if you get up into um, angles, we can go from the club here down into our so it actually shows you 55 degrees. Sorry, it's, it's um, a little hard to read there. You can actually write on that one. Yeah. yeah, you can actually change the the color if you needed to as well. So you know. it might be even worse. There's 41. Blue would probably be, be good for the face on. Yellow might be good for the down the line, just because you have such a bright background. Good call. I'm colorblind, so it's a little hard. Uh, before we go to the next one, you can actually go back. So I drew this one, so I can actually go back. So every one that I drew it will go back. You can use an eraser if you want to erase them, or you could just delete everything. Then that cleans it all up. You can change the thickness of the lines here. Uh, obviously, the colors I showed you here. So if we get back into the setup, we do have another feature here, which is a sway feature. So you can um, get that set up if you were to really work on the movement. So there we go. So this would show you a sway figure. We do have a rectangle. And if you see next to each of the names, like R rectangle, then you see the, the letter R, you can use your keyboard. Let's say if I just click on R, it would go like that. I can click on C to go to circle. And if you do kind of miss, you know, you can double click and you can move it into the position or even make it a little bit bigger, smaller by going that way as well. So I went into a uh, circle, you have a free hand. That's what this one is. You have arrows if you want to talk about, um, you know, how, how the forces or where the knee is going. You have lines really get messy here, but I think everyone can see where we're going with that. You have all the standard drawing features there. Okay. So after that, we're going to get into some of the, the window options. So again, this is just the, the single recording, which has obviously she was on the force plate here. So we have the balance plate. We have the forces here. I'm not too sure if we had a launch monitor set up on this one, but this would be maybe a good one, um, you know, if you were to specify into the swing, looking at the ground forces. So again, all of these um, boxes, you can move into whatever items you'd like to have. So, um, so again, you can write comments. So all the boxes, you can fill whatever needs you have there. And speaking of data boxes, if you are looking for, if your tempo and rhythm box is empty, that is based off of the bookmarks. So if this is ever empty and you're wondering why, just make sure that you have your bookmarks set and you'll populate this info. Perfect. So I mentioned before about um, the different layout options. So we did have compare here. So here you have compare. Now compare you can use in regards to um, either swings that you've taken or swings from the Explorer. So if I take, and I know these are not the exact same clubs, but we, let's say we take Suzanne from a driver swing from before. So I can just drag and drop it right in there. And what you see here is we have the tabs. Um, they're already orange, which is great because now I can synchronize everything. So we do have a synchronizing tool that if I click on this, you could synchronize this, both of the swings from takeaway from top of swing or impact. So then the two swings would be viewed together uh, and they're synchronized together. Now this is shown by these two being locked. So this is locked up at the top. We do have viewport A, 
So if I do click that, it's highlighted orange. So as I move the ball, every, you can go through the swing on the left side. If I click on the right side, only the right side's moving. And if I were to click it again, they're now synced together. And if you have two swings that are very similar and you're not sure which one is which, you can go down here to the stack. And so this A represents viewport A and B represents viewport B. So I was saving the overlay uh, for this. So once you do have them, uh, the swings that you want to look as an overlay, we do have the overlay feature right here. So um, I wanted to save this one for um, getting them into the right position. So I like to start at the, the setup. So you can see she's a little off here. So I'm going to click on the zoom. I'm going to click on A because this is the one I'm going to move around. So I can actually put this, let's say, into the lead foot. So there's her position. I can maybe make her just a touch bigger here. That's actually a little too big. She hasn't grown, so well, the distance is a little off camera wise. But I think you get the idea that you can um, move these into certain positions to get it like that. Yeah, I think most of our customers are going to have their cameras and their plates set up in the same position, so they won't have a variation of distances or anything like that, so they won't have to yeah. mess with that. Definitely an advantage of having like camera mounts and not moving the cameras around and having a position where they always stand. So, no. um, so now you can everyone can see that, actually, if I play the swing at a little bit slower pace here, um, so if I wanted to see what viewport A or viewport B, those are the percentages. So you can actually change it. So it's really good for those of you that are making swing changes or working with individuals that you can actually show them this is a before and after. Okay. Any uh, Anything else we should add there, Travis? I think that's pretty good for layout. I mean, like you said, maybe show them detailed data one more time just so they can really see how big of an emphasis it is on the balance plate. Um, and like Tim said, you know, all these boxes are still interchangeable. So if you are looking for other information than torque and rhythm, you can pick and choose whatever you want in there. And pop up there, there it is. So now let's go stance. There you go. Okay. Okay, so from here, let's see, we're going to get into online and recording. So um, let's start with recording a lesson. So let me pause this one here. We'll go here and pause it a second. So we do have record a lesson. So if I record a lesson, everything that I'm saying and doing will be shown on the, the screen here. So I can draw lines, I can do you know, comparisons, and it is a voiceover. So I'm going to stop the video now, and it's preparing the lesson. So these, this information and logo is all changeable. So we can show you or... Yeah, we'll show you that in the settings here in a few moments. But this is where you can get an initial preview, so you can get an idea of what your student's going to see, just to make sure that everything is correct and then if you want to then over here on the top right are your four options on how to um on what you want to do with them so you can either save it to disk which is basically just saving it to your computer's hard drive from there you can upload it to any other social media or any platform that you might want to um, any jump drive or anything like that um, sending by email this is where putting in your email address when you're first setting up your student comes in handy. So whenever it comes time to send out that email, um, it's gonna automatically put in their email address. Um, if you have your Google account linked to Spin Catalyst, you can upload it directly to your YouTube channel and you can just type in your uh, student's email address and they will get a link to take them to your YouTube channel. Um, you can also make it public, so that way anybody that visits your channel can take a look at it. And then the last one is uploading to online. So we'll log Tim in really quick here with his saved credentials. And 
Basically, all you need to do is click on the plus sign, and let's say Tim wants to send that to me. I have a couple extra profiles, but most people will only have one, but you will basically find the user by searching for their name, and just click OK, and click Done, and it'll send it out to them through the cloud. They'll get a notification on their app, and also in their email inbox, um, and they can open it from either location. That's perfect. Yeah, and, and those all the lessons are saved up here. So I went up to the Explorer. Actually, I probably went a bit a little bit too quick. So if I go into the Explorer, click on Lessons. That's the lesson I just recorded. Um, and recorded right there, so it's saved. So a lot of the swings, if you choose to, or lessons, you can um, find them right there. This is helpful. Like some students, some instructors might be out on the range where they might not have internet in order to send out their lessons. So they might record four or five lessons out on the range. And then once they get back inside and have connection to the internet, they can just open up their Explorer and double click on the lesson and send it out from there. Perfect, Travis. Great. So I did have a question from Charlie. Charlie asks if um, you can actually film with your iPhones or iPads outdoors. And we can, and we do recommend that you film with the Swing Catalyst app. And then what you can do is upload it to the cloud. And then as a user, you can come in to, so Charlie, if you were to send me your swing on the app, you could actually look at me, upload it to the cloud, send it to me. I would find your swing. It would actually come in the inbox here. I would um, then upload it. Um, for instance, if I took you know, my swing that I have here, then I could download it into the software. Then I would go to my name uh, right here. So you can see that, I think it was this one right here. So there would be this, this swing. So you can see there it, there it is downloaded. There it is downloaded in Swing Catalyst and here, here it is right here. Actually it's right there. So yes, use the Swing Catalyst app. Uh, if you do not use the Swing Catalyst app, it's still possible to import into the software. You just have to go onto your Swingcast online account and add it, but do make sure the video clip is short, no more than four, uh, five seconds. And then you can import the, the swing as well uh, into the software. So that was one question. The other question here was, can you sync your launch monitor to the, the camera footage? And I'd like to show you this one because I think this one's a, a good one to kind of give you an overview of everything. So. Here's a four camera layout. So it's, um, you see down the line from the back face on. This was a unique one that we put it out in front. But yes, you can take the launch monitor. In this instance, we had the uh, flight scope. So you can actually put the ball flight there and club path information, club, spin. So basically what happens is that we have um, four, uh, foresight, flight scope, and full swing that you can have the software running parallel to Swing Catalyst. We, after the shot is hit, we grab the information and, and pull it up into our software and save it with our, our video file. So you can actually see the swing with everything that's happened with the ball. And then if you do have a sensor plate, you can actually then look at the pressure and stance as well, and even a force plate. So this ties everything in together. Um, one of those questions was how does so, uh, sharing with social media work? So we don't have any way of directly sharing with Instagram or anything like that through Swing Catalyst. Um, just the YouTube that you saw whenever you're sending out your lessons. But that's where saving it to disk might be helpful because once you have it on your computer saved as a file, you can upload it to any platform that would accept a video like that. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So. Um, I did want to sh share one thing before we conclude. Remember, I, I made the group setting. So if I were to capture a video, right now it's capturing me. But let's say I have a group. So I'm going to try to find the tour swings. Uh, all right. But you may, you may want to have this as, I don't know if you have either couples or you have a group session. But if you have the group, oh, let's see here. I forgot about that. Let's let's exit out and then I'll show you that. So if we're done with the lesson recording, 
when you're all done, just don't hit the X up here. Try not to do that because it's going to save all your swings. I think one thing to save, and this is, you know, Travis can touch on this, but if I end the lesson recording, it's going to say, do you want to keep all the swings? I don't know if you want to keep all the swings. Uh, if you had viewed certain ones, you could just keep those. If I wanted to keep the rated ones, I only have rated ones, so this would be the only one of all the swings that would be saved, or I could just discard all recordings. So it's important that you, I feel as though you keep the computer as clean as possible, and Travis, you can maybe explain why. Um, I mean, our database is pretty well optimized, so you can, you know, have thousands of swings, but then it makes it a little bit more difficult if you want to go back and look for a certain swing. You know, you, know, you don't want to be digging through a whole bunch of swings that you didn't necessarily want to keep in the first place. So I definitely agree with Tim. Um, I think keep viewed is probably one of the most used. Um, if you do get in the habit of using the star rating system, that's definitely a good alternative as well. Um, and uh, depending on your computer, if you're on a laptop, you know, which might not have a larger hard drive like a desktop will, um, you know, if you're using this for eight hours a day, five days a week, um, your database can start to fill up relatively quickly. Um, so helping cut down on swings that you don't want to save will help you prevent your database from filling up too long, yeah. too fast. That's part yeah, speed up the computer, everything. So I'm gonna dis discard these because I don't need to see the side of my head. So I'm gonna go back and analyze. Uh, let me pull myself back up. And again, what I'm going to get into is I start a new session and I have a group lesson or I have a group together. So what I would do up here is I would find the group and it's the tour players. Um, so I'm going to, well, it's obviously it's open there. And then I'm gonna say, let's say, um, well, I'm having these three players in the hitting bay today. So I'm gonna put on Aaron Badley first, and then he hits a shot, or he might hit two shots. You can easily then go right up to the next player. Um, because we had it before where you could just go back and forth between players, so you wouldn't have to search them. You have to look into that, but then this mm -hmm. way you can, you can have you know, Alex Andy Bark, he can, he can hit some shots. Oh, here we go. And then on Norquist, she could hit some shots. So you can go back and forth because it is a little bit cumbersome if, let's say, um, you know, someone like Aaron Badley hit a shot using Alexander Bork's um, name because now it's going to be saved under the wrong file. So uh, if you do have multiple players hitting and you are switching between these, you know, be – um, on top of who's hitting each shot because it, it is very difficult and almost not at all to be able to go back and change the take files to another player. I think Travis can also. Uh, I was just going to say um, thanks for joining us, Hoppy. Um, appreciate that. And Jamie, um, thank you for your kind words. Um, we do try and make the software as user friendly as possible. Uh, we have a full team of developers, so we are always open to suggestions and feedback on things that um, you guys want to see. Um, we can um, touch on it a little bit later, but we have a user feedback page where people can submit ideas and other users can vote on them. And then depending on the demand, our developers will put priority on those. Yep. Perfect. So. Um, we went through the online lessons. It's the end session. We kind of covered that um, kind of off the top there. So we're now into the settings. Travis, you want to touch a little bit about the settings. So um, yeah, let's actually go back to the main menu just because um, I mean, you can access the settings from both inside capture mode. Um, but I think it's a little easier to really get an idea of what you're looking at through here. So under general settings, um, all the way at the top, you know, if you're, depending on where you're located, if you want metric or imperial, you can select that here. Um, whenever you are ready to start hitting shots, whenever the system is in a ready state, so you can actually hit something, it'll also play a sound. So if you want that, make sure you have sound checked off. Um, occasionally we'll release some beta versions of the software um, that will 
fix certain bugs that are you know, kind of critical. So sometimes we'll release that beta and if you need access to that, this is where you can do so. Um, I wouldn't really suggest doing anything with video rendering. We usually leave those both checked off. Um, video encoding is a new feature in 9.3. So if you're not running the latest version, you might not have this. But this will basically help you, um, will speed up the capture time in between each shot. So just makes the system a little bit faster. So you can go down here, expand it, and click Run Performance Test. And you'll get a little progress. And it's basically going to tell you if your CPU is faster or if, you're, if you have a dedicated graphics card inside your computer is faster. Um, not sure why it's not popping up here for I think we're, Maybe because we're on using up all the... Yeah, it could be, you know, something with the Zoom or something like that. Usually we don't have any issues running this. Um, it'll populate your information pretty quickly. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. But usually by default, NVIDIA is going to be the fastest. Um, and if you are using NVIDIA and if you do have any run into any problems, it's good to check and make sure that your graphics card drivers are up to date. If you need help with that, you can always email support at swingcatalyst.com and I'd be happy to assist. Um, if you ever need to double check what version you're on or if you're using the correct license, if you have multiple bays with multiple licenses, um, you can click on show license configuration. So here we'll see, you know, this license is good for four cameras, high speed cameras, launch monitor, motion plate, pretty much the works. It's owned by Tim. Um, and here you can see um, his license never expires, but his updates will expire eventually. Um. <clears throat> Uh, database, this is really helpful if you have multiple hard drives on your computer. Um, so say your operating system is on the smaller hard drive, your C drive, but you have like a two terabyte, three terabyte, four terabyte um, D drive, you can move it to there. So Tim's already put it on his D drive. So his database size is uh, 104 gigs total, but he's got almost three terabytes of free space. So plenty of room. And then down here is where you get all of your lesson branding. So that splash screen when you first um, finished your lesson and you were going to preview it, that's where all this information will pop up. So basically just customize it to yourself and your club. And you, um, if you have a logo image that you want to add, just select image and navigate to wherever you have that picture saved on your computer. And then down here is where, you know, whenever you're sending out a lesson by email, you have to have a outgoing email address associated. So this is where you put in your email information. I would say by far Gmail is probably the easiest. Um, I'm going to log you out really quick, Tim. Okay. So basically, when you first start up the software for the first time, this is what it'll look like. So if you have a Gmail account, you just click on login. It'll open up your browser and, you know, Tim's already kind of logged in on his Google Chrome here, so it's all saved. So you basically are just selecting the Google account that you want to use to send out your lessons with. And it's going to basically ask you to allow just access, um, just like any other app would. Um, yeah, you just follow along. You have support articles on it too, so we, we don't have to yeah. wait so long. But Yeah, again, it might just be due to the, we have so many things running at the moment. Yeah, I think so. Um, and the um, settings as well, you have your cameras. So depending on how many cameras you have, this is where you'll have them all listed. Just pick and choose which camera. Um, you know, you can press the preview. So we'd say this is, you know, maybe face on left or whatever. Yeah, it's important then, to get the, that right because if you are to compare a swing later on or to a tour swing, we do have the tour swing set correctly. So it could you know, have a mixed match there if you were to put the wrong viewport in. So that, that is important. 
Yeah, definitely. And like, um, if you have a left-handed player come in, it will default to the left-handed camera as long as you have it labeled in here correctly. Yeah. Um, cameras are pretty straightforward. Hardware is um, very helpful if you have balance plate or launch monitors. So if you are using a launch monitor, I get this quite a bit. If for some reason your system is not automatically triggering off of your launch monitor, you just wanna make sure you come in here to settings, make sure that it's turned on, select your appropriate launch monitor. And Tim obviously doesn't have a track band connected right now, so this message will pop up. But you basically wanna make sure that it's turned on, the launch monitor that you're using is selected, and use as trigger is checked off. Whenever the launch monitor and swing house are communicating, you'll see this not connected in parentheses go away. And that's you know basically your indication that the two are working together. And then from there, you just go into analyze and start, you know, start up a capture session. Um, if you don't have a launch monitor, you can also use a microphone as your trigger. So basically there's three triggers. There's manual trigger, like Tim demonstrated at the very beginning. There's launch monitor, which I just went over. And then you can also use a microphone. Um, if you're gonna be using a microphone, we usually suggest trying to place it relatively close to the ball because you're gonna to wanna to adjust the threshold and the sensitivity of the microphone. So that way other sounds like somebody talking, you know, maybe at the computer, if your microphone's at the computer and someone's talking there, it might inadvertently trigger the yeah. software. So, um, let me put me up here. That's a good point, Charles. Maybe we can just show them here the threshold because we didn't cover that before. So yeah, um, it's up here under capture options. So if you were to have this enabled, and as I talk, we don't have one really connected here, but as, as I were to talk or hit balls, you'll see this white or it will have a, like a noise coming up. And you just want to drag this to where it triggers. So if you're in a really noisy area, this is going to be up higher um, because there'll be more, um, a little bit less sensitive to the noise around you. If you're in a really quiet place, then you, know, you can maneuver that, but that's where the sensitivity is. In that. Yeah. Um, so, yep, Tim just got into the settings from the capture mode, like I was saying earlier. Um, I don't need, you don't need to concern yourself with uh, Quantalysis Track Manager or Lighting Control. Um, the last tab that I wanted to go over is the screen. So here is where you want to make sure if you have a microphone for your lesson audio voiceover, make sure that it's checked off and you're proper microphone is highlighted here. Um, some customers, like if they have a monitor on the floor in front of the golfer, they will use the feedback screen. And basically what this is just, um, if we go back into capture mode, it basically just opens up the camera. And this is just a, another window that you can then you know, move over to a different monitor and um, you know they can put this camera down on the floor right in front of their golfer. Yeah, so this this camera, you're not seeing any of these windows open. So you 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 get to see all the windows, but the person that's hitting shots, like at the other monitor, does not see those. Yeah. But I think that's about it for the settings. Yeah, we did have a question. Let's see, uh, is there a limit on how many you can have in that group? I. I showed the group of the PGA Tour group or whatever group you do decide and no you can have as many as far as I know um, that I've ever put in there that you can you can add to it so um, you can definitely add quite a few there. Uh, Leon Marks are one of our ambassadors in Luxembourg he said can um, can you show how to capture certain areas with higher frames per second please? Yeah I can go over that really quick. Um... So that's gonna be under your settings and cameras. So if we're gonna be doing it for Tim's Chameleon, we would want to go to advanced. And um, that's gonna be, depending on what cameras you have, the point grade cameras, this 
might not be available. Um, there's actually a region of interest tab that shows up for um, like AVT cameras and IDS cameras. So depending on what camera you have, Leon, if you want to get with me, um, you know, just email support at swingpalace.com. I'd be happy to show you how to do that with the point gray camera, um, as well as, uh, you know, AVT or whatever camera you have. But this camera that Tim has right now doesn't have the region of interest, but this is where you would do that. Um, you can basically type in the, um, the resolution of the camera that you want and that'll crop it down. And once you do that, then you'll be able to increase your frame rate. Yep. So if we leave this for a second, one thing that's really neat here is that if you did have a, um, a left-handed player, you can actually switch them to be a right-handed or vice versa. So you can actually go into the camera and make it the, the other side. So that same with if we went into um, a player here again, Let's see if I have one, one of my down the line. So if I, let's say take this one, I can actually go into the settings and actually now I'm left-handed or vice versa. So it's um, a nice one for those of you that do work with the other side. Let me see if I can show him really quick with the um, with the dragon camera. That's what I'm using. That's what I'm using for Zoom. Okay. For yeah. So we wouldn't be able to use this in both Swing Catalyst and Zoom at the same time. Uh, so I, yeah. yeah. Um, but like I said, Leon, if you just want to email support at swingcatalyst.com, I'd be happy to schedule a time where I can log in remotely and assist you with that. Yeah, which gets us into, I think we went through some of the settings to help. So we do have a help tab here. And first of all, I'd like to get into the learning center. If you open the learning center here, there we go. Of course, it's there. We have something open here. Yeah, close out your Chrome tab. You do have one open. Here, let me try and help you. <laughs> That's why I have support login in. It's because we we're still, uh, Chrome was just being a little wonky with the uh, email that we were logging in, but yeah. There we go. So if you click on the Learning Center right there, it's going to bring you to our website where you can read about different articles. I think a nice feature is our Lesson of the Weeks. We do have some um, call professionals who have taken their time to work with our software, give you some tips on how you can work with an individual. They're basically a lesson video, so you can get some tips there. And on the left-hand side, you can see there's uh, articles. And at the bottom, we welcome everyone to take our certification course. This one's free, it's online. You can take the test, watch the videos, uh, really good stuff. And there will be some more level two certifications coming uh, soon. Then if, you do have any questions or have the software and you're looking how to do things. Let's say you have an issue with point gray cameras or what it might be. This is going to bring you to the support page where you can type in certain keywords. So if I were to type in point gray and then click enter, you can scroll down. There's 20 results for point gray. So if you're having an issue with point gray or even how to use it, how to set it up before contacting us, we want you to take the take a moment to go through that and see if you can resolve the issue through our support page. Yep. Um, and if you do end up emailing support, so on the main here, you have our support number, which will reach me. And then also, you know, like I mentioned to Leon, just emailing support at swingcalis.com is very helpful. It, we have a ticket system where it really helps us keep track of who needs help with what and just helps me stay on top of um, any customers that need assistance. Um, if you do end up emailing support, sometimes if it's something that I need to help you with directly, like I was offering Leon to log in remotely, this is where you're going to do it. So, you know, it's really good to get familiar with this, just going into help and clicking on start remote support. We already have it running because I'm logged in here to help Tim. But basically, if you get this popped up, you can just click yes and what you're looking for is, um, 
Yeah, there you go, Tim. So, so basically, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so what I did is, you may have heard the sound as well, so I got a pop-up window from the team viewer asking if we'd like to allow access, and definitely make sure you select yes, otherwise our support team cannot log on. So I clicked yes, and then comes up this window here. And usually you'll only get that if you have another instance of TeamViewer. TeamViewer is a pretty popular remote support program, so some people have the full version of TeamViewer on their computer or maybe full swing support or something like that, so. Okay, so do you, I don't know if you need to log in, you can log in again if you like, but I think that kind of wraps up some of the uh, support again, if you did have support issues, we want you to do try looking at the help center first, and then if you still need some assistance, do email our support at uh, support at swingcals.com. From here, I'm going to exit out the software for a moment, and then I'm going to show you, let's see here, from our, um, actually I'm just gonna go to Swing Catalyst here first. I'd like to have everyone go ahead, and we do have baseball for those of you that are interested in the baseball um, webinar. So we have us today, the next one, let's see. Didn't work out too well. Um, we have we have a webinar on Thursday, twelve thirty. Uh, it is with um, Dr. Scott Lynn, Tony Ruggiero, um, Jackson Court, and we have our first tour player and winner, uh, major winner, um, as well as Lucas Glover. So Thursday, hope you all can join us there. Uh, we thank everyone. Uh, let's see if we had a few other questions. See, they're popping in here. Um, maybe you can read them a little bit better. Let's see. Can we save all the swings captures to a cloud rather than to my own hard drive? Okay, let's go back into that. So, um, a really short answer, Charlie. Um, we don't really have a way of automatically saving every recording to the cloud. Um, first of all, I mean, all users get fifty free uploads for free, but we do have to maintain and pay for a server in order to store all this data. Um, so we do offer increased storage capacity if you do find yourself using the cloud a lot and you need to save more than 50 swings at a time. But you can also always add and remove swings as needed. Um, so it's not 50 total, it's you know 50 at one particular time. Yeah, we did have a, what are the costs for clients and myself as coach across a desktop, mobile and, and tablets, et cetera. So each computer would require a license. If you were using an iPhone or iPad or Android or I, iOS device, um, you can definitely use our app. Our app is free. Uh, you can download it, you can use it. Uh, we do have some YouTube videos on a lot of these different things, but it shows you the features of our app. And then your students can, like I mentioned, they can send you their swings through the app, which which then you can download on onto the uh, onto onto your software using the login through the online. Um, and the cost for that is up to two cameras with no integration, up to two cameras. It doesn't matter if you're an instructor or a home user. It begins at forty nine a month or four ninety a year. Um, if you're looking to have more than two cameras along with, there you go, so the basics up to two cameras, um, you can either pay by monthly or you can pay yearly. And then the pro version is the uh, up to four cameras with integration. So those are the two. And again, it doesn't matter if you're an instructor, it's, we just have one software. So it's either two cameras for 49 a month or 490 a year or our full package, which is four cameras, all the integration for $99 a month or $990 per year. So yeah, if you're looking for that launch monitor integration, which you know we feel is extremely helpful, um, you definitely want to make sure that you're selecting the pro version. Okay, well, I think that's all the questions and everything. Um, Again, we hope you join us Thursday, 12.30 with Dr. Scott Lynn, Tony Ruggiero, Lucas Glover, Jackson Cord. Um, we thank you for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it. 
And again, uh, reach out to us. All the information is on swinghouse.com or even on our YouTube page. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Good luck out there. Yeah, thanks for joining us.